it says a WWE production mm-hmm. yeah. and Triple H produced it. Yeah. But then I like went into this wormhole and uh, Just apparently watching Triple H matches for like hours. No. <laughs> Originally, the first one was made in like 2005 and it was like a digital short and I, it's coming full circle. And I was Googling trying to find the digital short, but all I could fucking find was uh, the playing system Oculus. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know that, but I did notice the WWE thing and I was like, <sighs> Because usually every time there's a WWE produced movie, there's a wrestler in it somewhere. So mm-hmm. like I was just and I don't know any today of today's wrestlers. Like I watched old wrestling like in the 90s and stuff. But like I was just kind of sitting there like, oh God, who did they shove in this fucking movie to like, <laughs> you want the money? You got to take this fucking guy that can't act and, you know, pretend that he's important in the movie somehow. Yeah, surprisingly enough, they um they let Mike Flanagan do his thing. And I oh, was like, I'm hell sure. yeah. But there is an Easter egg because his uh, Triple H's real name is like Hunter Levesque. Hurst Helmsley. Huh? Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Oh. Triple H, Hunter Hurst Helmsley. That makes sense. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> so when I, w- when I stepped into this wormhole... <laughs> They, uh, the internet was like, and here's a Triple H Easter egg for everyone when they're at the auction and they're saying where the Lasser glass came from. Um, they're saying that it came from the Levesque estate, and that's actually Triple H's real name. I mean, that might be his like real, real name. Oh, maybe, but like, yeah, Triple H is Hunter Hurst, so that might be his real, real name. Well, props to you for knowing that. I just watched wrestling as a kid. I always thought wrestling was cool, but I never got in it. I remember seeing one episode. I guess <laughs> episode. it's an episode. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one episode of wrestling one time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sweet. And it was all. And there's Disney the opener. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it was all Disney characters, though. And I was, like, really stoked. But there was some guy dressed as the genie, and he was, like, sitting on a chair, and he was just, like, spanking all the girls, all the Disney princesses. It was a kinky match. I was young. Did you you find this on Pornhub? No, no. This was on cable. cable. Not an HBO channel. Like, Skinamax or something? No, no, no. (laughs) It was, like, there was a crowd around. That's super weird. I'll try and look it up later to like send you the video. It's like it was a real thing. I swear to God. Unless my, I don't know, could be made up. My brain. I don't know what it's doing lately. I mean, it's... but it's like a core memory. <laughs> All right, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I did my my book report. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome back. We're doing a product review on Oculus. Um, so let's jump into it okay obviously we're here uh heidi chose mike flanagan again she says it's unintentional but uh i don't know if i buy into that what year was this movie uh 2013 or 2014 really it's that old i thought it came out Mm -hmm. like 2018 19 something like that all right well let's hop into it um actually before we jump into the list uh this movie first of all mike flanagan does not know how to write a happy ending i don't know who hurt that man in his life but he does not write happy endings nothing he does is like everything's just a really shitty sad end and i'm like okay like i kind of like with the TV show, like with Midnight Mass, I was like, okay, yeah, that's that, that's the way that should have ended. Like, right. Hill House, okay, I get it. Like, you know, 
it, it wasn't an unhappy ending. It wrapped up, but like family members died and things like that. So, you know, I was like, but movies, they wrap up with happy endings or not happy endings, but at least like the demon is defeated or, you know, whatever the case Something. is. Yeah. yeah, this 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 guy, he just he's he won't do it. It's like if the studio came to him was like, dude, you can't make this. If he's like, fine, I won't make it. I'll fucking just never do it instead. It, it's like it's crazy to me how many <laughs> how many sad endings he can make. Like it's like his thing and now. But at least now I know moving forward to not expect that from him. So, yeah, yeah, that. the endings of his shows I felt like they were all tragic, but they were like beautiful in a way. But this fucking movie, the ending of this fucking movie was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> it yeah. was fucked up. Yeah. It was fucked up. Yeah. Like it, no, it really no closure. I mean, you get the closure because technically the story, well, the story's not over, but there it ends like there's an ending but it's just not one that you want like you want them to destroy the mirror or whatever but Mm -hmm. you just you don't get to that dude was out of fucking mental ward for three days and he was right back in it and he'll never see the light of day again no poor timbo that's such a bummer he Um, got the shitty end of the stick for sure yeah, well, he's a shitty actor, so. Yeah, um, there was some shitty acting in it. The, yeah, yeah. the fiance. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, so let's hop into it. Who was your show stealer? Who, who was your character or whatever you liked? So as far as, like, the acting obviously wasn't good for the brother, but, like, his whole Mm storyline that was like the show stealer for me because it's just like he had like he ends up killing his dad or he I guess he helps his dad kill himself he's like Mm -hmm. holding the gun and his dad is like pulls the fucking trigger as he's told so he's like fucked up from some trauma no one believes him that his dad made him pull the trigger and then he like does all this work on himself to like get the fuck over it and he ends up going back because his sister is like balls deep in the shit and he's like Mm -hmm. i i want to look out for her at least Mm -hmm. but he doesn't he doesn't really take the advice that his doctor gave him which was protect your recovery right at all costs before anything else Mm -hmm. and then he thinks he's doing the right thing and then he fucking kills his sister bro (laughs) (laughs) and that's our review of oculus um (laughs) the end (laughs) Like, I I mean, yeah, his character is, he's got the biggest arc and everything. And, but I totally understand, like, I understand what the doctor's saying, like, protect your recovery. But I also understand that, like, protect your recovery is easy when it's, like, your friends Mm -hmm. that, that want you to, like, come out and, like, grave rob or something. You're like, "Eh, I can't deal with that. That might blow my recovery. But your sister, like the only person that you have left in the world is going to do something stupid. You kind of, you kind of have to stick around with that one. So I I understand like, that's a tough thing. That's a tough choice. Um, I'm surprised he didn't just make the whole movie about that choice, uh, knowing Mike Flanagan, but um, because he almost did that with Hill House. Uh, But for me, I really liked the sister, um, Kaylee. I liked her. I, and it was, it was really only the one thing that sold me on her because I don't like her stupid face, but the way she (laughs) delivered like the, the initial um, YouTube video or whatever they're doing. Like, yeah. When she's like going through and showing the pictures and she's doing it really fast and everything like that. I, I enjoyed that. I was like, okay smart way to give you all the backstory smart way to tell you exactly what you're doing here like 
it brought the whole movie right there and it's like boom here's everything you need to know in a creative way and i think she delivered it really well but outside her the mirror uh was the show stealer yeah yeah that was my favorite element Mm -hmm. that's included in the notes that you sent me oh is it yeah but i thought it was cool yeah it was like show stealer favorite character oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay what made the movie for you yeah okay i guess i don't know elements mentioned um (laughs) i swear but um yeah mirrors um those can be fucking freaky you know what i mean like it's believed people believe that mirrors can be portals like Mm -hmm. especially if you like get a mirror from like a vintage place, a mm. thrift store. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they can be spooky as fuck. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you could be like getting ready. You think you see something in the, like mirrors are fucking trippy. Yeah. And they yeah, work I really great liked in that. horror movies too. Absolutely. Like the skeleton key, like covering all yes. the mirrors and not having them in places. Yeah. They work well in horror movies. And not only was that mirror the woodwork was really beautiful yes it's evil as shit and you know it's doing all this so i i liked its i liked its limitless power that it seemed to have like Mm -hmm. it because it they show it growing power like oh this plant's still alive this one's dead so its power is only reaching here i thought that that was interesting that it's like slowly building up power and then it can pretty much do whatever it wants so yeah um that was for sure it um it made me wonder about like she the sister really wanted she was like planning her entire life since that shit happened the rest of her life was just revolved around the fucking mirror and planning it so part Mm -hmm. of me wonders if like the mirror intentionally got into her head and had that i don't know kind of planned out because we see them as kids and it's like you know kind of time jumping throughout the movie Mm -hmm. and it starts to like Timbo and even Kaylee, like they both kind of start to be like interlopers, and it seems like their child selves even see them as adults. Did you notice that? Yeah, when uh, well, I really only noticed it when he walked into the room and the little version of himself like looked up at him. Um, that was the only time that I thought that they could see each other. I mean, obviously, the adult versions were seeing the kid versions, but I didn't know that the kid versions were seeing them. Um, especially because that never came into the story outside of that sequence, like that one shot. So Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't notice the, the girl version, see the older woman or anything like that, but maybe, maybe the mirror set it all up. Like I got to finish off this family. Fuck those kids. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Fuck them kids. (laughs) uh all right well what's your uh what's your show stealer you mean show breaker yeah show show breaker yes i've done this before thank you <laughs> you sure no i'm just kidding um yeah my show breaker was um just so we know that the mirror is like killing off the plants and it killed off the family dog from before but then she brought a fucking dog in mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. like with one purpose and that was for it to die Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh that was that i really didn't fucking like that yeah 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 and i didn't like the actor that played the fiance yeah he sucked but he was he had such a minimal role that he didn't bother me like it wasn't enough (laughs) his the you know like his harry potty harry potter haircut no the shape of his face is it doesn't i don't like it okay <laughs> he's got a lego you can't be i don't know um yeah the yeah the dog thing sucked um it was funny that she was like he figured it out because he was like what's his name it's dog it doesn't have a name like yeah. oh you brought this as like a sacrifice kind of thing okay um 
my show breaker was definitely the brother's dumb fucking face i just he sucked so bad he was just he was a whiny little bitch and he he was like oh but i just got this phone and oh what's happening like he just he was not i don't know you would think that after everything he's been through he would have flipped and been on board like wholeheartedly immediately especially yeah. seeing like how serious his sister was taking it and everything like i don't know it just he he bugged me he yeah just, either that um, or like take a stand you know and like yeah. stand up hardcore harder yeah. than that yeah he was like i don't want to do this okay i'll stay for an hour okay i'm staying to the end and look what it got you mm-hmm. he's a fucking buster um I didn't really have anything for this because there, this movie was pretty straightforward. Like there was a couple unique camera angles, but outside of that, there was nothing that really stood out to me. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would say like the moment where, I mean, there's a lot of horror movies out there. There's a lot of different, like, styles of gore Mm -hmm. and stuff like that and like this movie wasn't super gory I wouldn't like even describe it as gory but Mm -hmm. it had it had some like gore in there a little bit Mm -hmm. with the with the teeth shit and Mm -hmm. the fingernails and when the sister bites into the fucking light Mm -hmm. bulb yeah that that shit fucked me up because like those are my three things well, not light bulbs and teeth, but like <laughs> teeth and fingernails. I'm just like, bro, like it's very like makes me feel it like it, it like a visceral like level yeah. to that shit. So. Fingernails, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I understand teeth. Like I've seen movies where like somebody gets their teeth pulled out and shit. And it's like, that's that's fucking rough. But as somebody who's accidentally ripped off fingernails, like it just it's it sucks for a second, but even the dad made a big deal out of it. And what it was, it's not yeah. that big of a deal. I like I've I bite my fingernail sometimes and like I've bitten it down a little too far mm-hmm. and it's like sensitive for a while. And I don't know, <laughs> like I have so when I was like eight years old or something like that, my brother and sister they were both watching um House of a Thousand Corpses mm-hmm. and it was like 10 or 11 a.m something like that it was on like a weekend and they were just watching I came downstairs I was like I'm hungry I made myself something to eat and I made myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but I put like a lot of jelly in it Mm. and I was like watching that movie as a child shouldn't have been watching it Mm -hmm. maybe a little too young and I was just like eating all the jelly and it was just like (laughs) it kind of like Gore, like, I have a weird relationship with it today. Like, sometimes I can, like, handle it, and then other times I'm like, fuck. I don't know. But before that, I was fine with Gore. Like, I had seen Jeepers Creepers the summer before that and was fine. Yeah, no, I get the jelly and gore (laughs) correlation, surprisingly. Um, I I know that was weird. I may be the only person that gets that, but no, I get it. Because, yeah, when when it's, like, overly gory, especially with things like House of Thousand Corpses and stuff, like, they use, like, when somebody is, like, when they use, like, tearing away effects and stuff, it it is very, like, almost jelly. Because it's dark. It yes. has a dark tint, and it's kind of uh, gelatinous. And, yeah, so I get, I mean, I get it. I don't, I don't think it would have affected me the same way, but I totally, yeah, no, I get that. it it makes sense um what about the soundtrack and score did you did you find anything interesting about that um there were some moments where I felt like it added to it but like overall it just kind of sounded to me like pretty standard I don't know what about you um I wrote nothing yeah yeah there was just nothing like I don't even remember there being anything what do, you, what do you got for uh, that one moment? I mean, there's a few moments that I'm like thinking about because when the father like kills himself, 
that because he realizes like both the parents kind of realize Mm -hmm. right before they die and then they're like all right take me out i'm tapping out yeah um that one when the sister fucking dies but then like there's a part in the mirror where you can like see the mirror and you can see her mom on the other side like yeah so i mean that's something that's like kind of hard to catch so i guess i guess that would be my one moment is when kaylee dies and her mom is like oh shit (laughs) on the other side because it's just like in such a small view like in between like her hair or something so yeah um it seemed it seemed like like because at the end you see she like hugs her mom through the mirror or whatever it seems like that was like her mom walking up to give her that hug and then she was like oh shit like she's dead now well never mind come on through the mirror i guess (laughs) right Um, for me it was just the the mom from the side of the bed where like like that because you didn't expect it like i knew something was coming but i the fact that she was chained up is what caught me and they even like show a glimpse of the thing earlier like that chain whatever that mount on the wall that would hold fucking nobody by the way if you've ever done any sort of building whatsoever you know two screws on a shitty little piece of metal into drywall isn't going to hold fucking anything um but anyways somehow it stopped this full-grown woman in a ravenous rage uh but it scared the fuck out of me i was watching it and i was like (sighs) and then it happened and i was like what the fuck dude because like i i don't expect that from mike flanagan like i don't expect a jump scare from him like yeah. there's this movie does two different things there's it does the jump scare several times which i don't expect from him so it was it caught me off guard but then there's like the chilling scare where you see like the entity just kind of out of nowhere where it's not like intentionally scaring you but the fact that it's just there is scary yeah um like we did hell house llc and that was like the thing that scared the shit out of me with that movie was like it's a found footage movie and you see the person with the camera and they don't notice the image or the demon but you do and they just like walk right past it and you're just like oh shit look motherfucker like look look with your eyes man like it's right there um they did it a lot in that movie but like those chilling scares are the ones that get me the most but because that uh jump scare was so harsh i was just i was mm -mm, i was no mm -mm. Uh, yeah also the lady from the mirror was yet again she was a hottie kate siegel oh was it flanagan's wife yep oh that's why i thought that I was like, yeah, dude, she's she's a cutie. I would, yeah, she's I, if fine. I was if I was the dad, I'd be like, yeah, I'm leaving her for you too. Like, you can have all my fingernails yeah, yeah, and my yeah. toenails too. Yep, Let's go, yep. whatever you want. You too. Not a fan babe. of the kid. Yeah, not a fan of the kids. All right, throw them out. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, um, but the lines is that what we were getting to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I did write. I did write some lines down. Um, cool. Well, one. Okay. Um, Timbo, we're gonna have to get really brave. Yeah. Really, really brave. It's yeah. two reallys. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, I, that, was, that I was uh, like, yeah. <sighs> that's what they. So they say that at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. uh, as well as like the flashback towards like the middle of the movie or whatever so i think she says it to him as kids and then he says it to her as an adult because when they're outside the house and they're like no it wants us to stay out of the house we gotta go back in the house i think that's what he says to her to like get her to go back in or whatever um yeah for me no i didn't i didn't have any quotable lines i was (laughs) i mean there was nothing that like stood out to me um that weak ass slap that she gives him when he insults his dad i was like (laughs) that like 
the mo- the movie was so barely over the line of good to me because of little things like that like yeah. that weak slap and just like they're both whiny and like eh, like oh god i hope the mirror does win like this is fucking terrible uh, yeah the the moment when um she killed her fiance and then they realized like she actually killed her fiance and it wasn't the mirror fucking with yeah. them that's when i kind of knew i was like there's no hope oh really <laughs> there's that's no what... hope to be had here it's not going to end good <laughs> see i figured at that point that it was going to be uh both of them were going to go to the insane asylum and he was going to be like let me show you around this is my room uh my posters are still on the wall because i left fucking two hours ago because you're bitch ass uh but yeah i did i didn't see that coming but yeah there was yeah as soon as she like held up the phone and he was still dead i was like well that's how this is gonna go i guess because you yeah you can't get away with that like you can't blame that shit just like he tried to you can't blame that shit on a mirror so yeah um have you seen blair witch 2 the Blair Witch Project 2. It came out in the 90s. I have like I've seen that or something. multiple times. I saw it when I was so young. Mm-hmm. I used to watch it all. It was come on all the time. I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm watching this. I I, I like that one a lot. I but, loved it too. Uh, everybody fucking hated it. The Book of Shadows or whatever. Um, but there's parts of this that remind me of that. Oh, like really? where yeah, well, so in the Book of Shadows, they're like documenting everything. And then Mm -hmm. at the end of the movie, they're like, no, 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 that's not what happened. Watch the tapes. And then they watch the tapes and it's something different than what actually happened. And that's what was that reminded me of this movie or it reminded me of that movie because they would be watching the computer screen and there would be something different than what was actually happening in their version of reality. Like, yeah, he was looking at her standing there staring at the camera and she wasn't even in the room and the camera was showing nobody in the room and she was dry humping the mirror for some reason like nobody needs to stand that close to a goddamn mirror but um but yeah so like that that's what that reminded me of yeah um no i get that because it left me wondering at the end like did it fuck with the footage like are they gonna see anything I'm pretty sure this dude's just fucked, but it would be nice to have some closure because obviously the cops are looking at the footage at the end and they're like, he called us. And then right after he does this. So when he does call the first time, that shit was real. They Mm -hmm. didn't think it was real. And uh, yeah, it's just fucked. fucked. You You don't know. You don't know what's actually like translated onto the footage yeah that that would be an interesting thing to like explore if they wanted to do a second one or something um because if they watch the footage i imagine that the mirror wouldn't have altered her like opening statements or whatever so some like somebody could be like oh we want to investigate and then go back to the house years later some like some shitty tropey way of starting uh a number two but uh (laughs) literally two um but uh yeah that would i I would be curious to see how that would have played out um yeah that the so the flashbacks didn't bother you like the the time sequences jumping back and forth that that was not a thing that didn't bother me because I really, I just wanted to know like what the fuck happened when they were kids. Mm-hmm. So like, I just, I wanted to know. So it did, it didn't bother me, uh, but I guess it bothered you, huh? <laughs> well, no, it's just like most movies do it like once or twice and get the whole story in or like give you the gist of it. This movie spent the whole time flipping back and forth and then as the movie continues it starts to blur those lines which is an interesting concept but it would be more interesting if they had just went with the blurring the lines part 
and not the flipping back and forth because i mean by the time they started blurring the lines i was like i don't even give a shit anymore like can we just see what's happening now like i don't need that like because they end up playing the rest of the you know past in the present while the present is happening they're like blurring those lines and it's just like now i'm watching two separate movies at the same time and like i just like i don't know it it started to bother me maybe i'm just too dumb to keep up like i understood everything but i'm just like one one at a time like i don't turn on two Mm -hmm. tvs and watch two movies i do but like Mm -hmm. it, it just i don't know it was starting to bother me i was like i just just pick one and stick with it dude either make them kids and we watch what initially happened. it was like he wrote oculus one and two and they were like no we'll give you money to make one and he's like fuck it let's put them together and make one movie and could that's very well happened. be yeah um i don't know like i think uh he did he kind of did that in hill house and then it it ends up like working out in hill house anyways because um of the youngest one, Nellie, she ends up being the bent neck lady herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of like this weird thing where she was like interloping through her own past. Mm-hmm. And he did, he kind of like touched on that. I think he was like trying to make that work in this movie. I feel like this movie was like, I don't know, it was like almost Hill House in a way. But, and I know Hill House is based on a book, but it was just interesting to me because it was just like seemed very similar in a lot of ways i mean maybe the like i know a lot of people will take concepts and you know try and work them out and then they'll flush them out later in other things maybe this was just like a test run at the idea and then he was able to like very clearly knock it out of the park in hill house um yeah and if that's what it takes that's fine but it to me i was just by like by the end of it i was like come on man like just just one thing i don't need to watch both versions of them be scared whiny little brats like yeah i didn't want to know what was happening in real time because when we saw like what they were doing on footage when they came back into the room and everything was all like discombobulated and then they watched the footage and it was them doing it themselves like Mm -hmm. it would have been cool to see like what was actually happening like on the footage Mm -hmm. but yeah so yeah that part was definitely frustrating it would have been it would have been nice to have seen like a uh, i don't know maybe a cop watching the footage or like skimming through it or have it like giving an edited version down to somebody to be like watch over this or something like just so we could see it all like we had to watch those two versions there's clearly a third version of what the mirror wanted us to see and probably a fourth version of what was actually captured and it would be nice to see those versions as well but I, I don't know then i would have to watch four times as many people do the same shit or not but still like i don't know I, I'm, I'm backtracking on that one never mind to that um this movie a thrill or a kill for you um i would say the first time i watched it it was thrilling to me yeah yeah, the very first time I was younger when I first saw it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just, I don't know, I was like scared. Uh, mm-hmm. The paranormal shit, um, that scares me the most. Yeah. Because it's same. like unknown, you know, and yeah. we're, we're afraid of what we don't understand. So, yeah, same. I, that's literally the only thing that still scares me is paranormal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> I feel like I've poked enough holes in this that you were like, "Well, I did like it," um, but yeah, no. I mean, it was thrilling for me too. I, it's definitely not a kill. Um, I think that the storyline isn't 
like the movie itself isn't the the thrilling part it's the way it was done and like even though i didn't necessarily like the flipping back and forth part Mm -hmm. that was like the more like thinking about how they put it all together was more entertaining so would you see this would you pay to see this movie like with ticket prices popcorn drinks all that junk would you pay to go see all the this movie when it came out yeah yeah it was a different time back then like my eyebrows were super thin you know what i mean (laughs) like it was a different time so so yes are you saying that those are thick eyebrows they were okay listen these aren't well, we're not talking about my eyebrows. <laughs> you literally my eyebrows, talking about your eyebrows. A different time. I believe you. Time. I believe you. You're the one that keeps going. I was ready to go. I was waiting for you to be like, it's a, it was a different time. Pizzas were only five bucks at Domino's. I don't know. Like, I just. Yeah. I, pizzas were only five bucks, you know, shopping at Charlotte Roos, you know. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. Well, but... I pray that you never have to find out. <laughs> All right, cool. Now I'm going to deep dive into that. Um, all right, well, uh, do you think that this could end up being like a cult classic? Do you think this has the potential? When I asked Jerry this question, it means two separate things. No, when I asked uh, JB this from Camp Nightmare, it was a completely different. He had a different idea of what a cult classic was than I did, so... I guess oh. it's I guess it's a term that means something to everybody that's different. Well, when I think of cult classic, I think of like a a movie that's just super unique from its time that has like a certain aesthetic and certain way it's done that people are like obsessed with it to it to which it has like cult following Mm -hmm. like a lot of people like it like their fucking facebook groups about Mm -hmm. it yeah that's that's what normal people think jb just thought like it would be studied in film schools and shit and i was like oh okay all right to each his own Um, i mean he's not wrong but that's not my idea of a cult class i could see (laughs) this being studied in other classes like psychology Psychology. yeah yeah yeah. um but i don't think this would be studied in a film school necessarily um i don't i don't think this would be a cult classic like i would i want it to be but i don't think it would be because the acting is just not not where it needs to be for it to be that you know what i mean like it's not even like a gimmicky sort of acting that was happening on it like so no that's the hard thing to decipher with like cult classics because if you look back at like uh friday the 13th or like those those old school cult classics like the acting was bad but it's only bad to us now like at the time people were like oh my like obviously they weren't like a-list actors but at the time people were like damn like the acting like evil dead like that that acting wasn't necessarily considered bad at the time so even though this might just be our version of that because we're living in now uh um, yeah we're living in now times um so like that could just be our version of it and then in 30 years they might look back and go oh the the look at the how the 2000s and 10s were how stupid that you know i don't know but um i don't think it's going to be a cult classic i think that i think that there's too much else out there that could end up being one um yeah and i think that i feel like cult classics just nowadays they just if they're going to be cult classic they come out cult classics um they just they hit that mark real fast uh maybe some films are added later but most of the time you're just like oh like the dark and the wicked that's a cult classic immediately as soon as it came out yeah you know it when you see it for sure 
Yeah. Exactly. If you have to hesitate, it's a no. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Um, all right. Well, how many stars would you give this, Heidi? <laughs> um, I would give it not five, probably four, maybe three and a half, even because the concept's pretty powerful. Um, but you wanna, there were a lot of issues, huh? Did you want to nail one of those down or? I guess uh, I'll do four. Okay. This is a four yeah. star movie. All right. I, I want to dive further into movies with you because uh, that's, that's an interesting take <laughs> on this. Um, <clears throat> I, I got to give it three stars. Like it's not, yeah. it's run of the mill to me. Um, like I said, like the, the idea behind the movie is not like the mirror being an evil entity. It's not new to the horror genre. It's just the way the movie was done. Like the way the puzzle was put together. That's the most entertaining part of the movie to me. Because again, the acting is not fantastic. Triple H wasn't even in the movie. Like I don't. Kate Siegel wasn't in it enough. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it. It was just very sort of refined and like understated. It was low key. Yeah, and he does that really well. And he yeah. content. And the further his career goes, I think he's getting better and better at it. Um, and I, that's why I don't hold this movie against him at all. And that's why I'm not going to give it like two and a half stars because I know that this is just a stepping stone to the great things that he has done recently. Exactly. In the past few that's years. why I want to give it four. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Knowing what I know. Yeah. Yeah. 